Today we're going to talk about um, food packaging. You should have lots of different packages in your cupboards that you can take a look at or you can look around on the internet as we go through this. Um, packaging varies greatly. If you look at this picture, um, we've got glass, we've got cardboard, we've got plastic. Um, the list goes on and on. And there's a reason why each company uses the type of packaging that they do. So we're going to go through that today and then I want you to spend a little time thinking about how you might package your food product. Uh, think about it in terms of you're not at home, you're at a food company and you have all of these resources available to you. Okay, so why do we need food packages? First of all, they make things easy to store. Uh, look at this aisle. Everything has a space, it stands up straight, it does not tipping over on each other. Um, it's easy to identify things when they're in their package. I can recognize that the things on the right are Gatorade bottles, right? Don't even have to see anything closer than this somewhat blurry picture. Um, it also helps protect them from spilling and from being damaged. You don't want to buy something and get home and have half of the product leaking out. Um, special packaging materials sometimes protect food from air, bacteria, chemicals, insects, light, any of the things that there might be problems with with the food. Um, flour, as an example, the way that it's packaged prevents little bugs and weevils and things like that from getting into it. Meat, if you think about the plastic tub that meat comes in, there's a, a plastic film over the top of it. Inside that tub, they've got some special gases injected to make your meat stay a nice color and make it last a long time. Um, sometimes food needs some short-term protection, like eggs or other ready-to-eat foods. So they just need something temporary to keep them in. And sometimes they need long-term storage, like coffee and rice, something where it can last for a year or two on the shelf. Okay, so here's your assignment that goes along with this. You're going to open up a Google slide file and create a collage of 10 different food products. Think of 10 things that you like um, and try to get things with different kinds of packaging. So put a picture, you can use many slides if you need to, but put a picture on the slide and then put a little text box with a label telling which type of packaging it is. And we're gonna go through different kinds of packaging in the upcoming slides. When you're done with this, you need to post this to Google Classroom. I'll have a place where you can drop this assignment. Okay, um, so let's get started. Aseptic packaging, this is oftentimes using cartons like the ones that you see here. Um, the food is sterilized by being pasteurized. So pasteurization is bringing it to a really high temperature for a short amount of time to kill all the, the pathogens or the bacteria that might cause problems. And then it's sealed in sterile containers. There aren't any preservatives needed and foods can be kept for up to a year without being kept in a fridge. On an interesting note, um, I just bought some Parmalat, which is a type of milk. Uh, it sits on the counter or on the, on the, shelf at Walmart, not in the refrigerator for a really long time. Um, and I, I bought some of that just to have at our house in case we run out of milk at some point and just need, you know, need some for baking or we need some to mix with cereal or something like that. So if you take a look at these containers though, you can see, um, you probably can think of lots of examples of things that you've seen that come in containers like this. I'm not gonna give you too many of those because I want you to look. Okay, steel or tin cans. Um, steel cans are often used for fruits and vegetables, sometimes meat, like I buy canned chicken or um, you can get tuna in a can. And then legumes. Legumes are um, like our beans, peanuts, those kind of things. This packaging is extremely sturdy, but it's more expensive. Um, so it's not, it's a lot of companies are going away from the steel or tin can just because of the expense. Um, okay, aluminum. Here's a pop can. Uh, aluminum cans with ring pulls are often used for fizzy drinks. Uh, aluminum is strong but expensive. It can be recycled, so that's a benefit of it. And the cans don't need any kind of coating. On the last slide, I should have said that. Sometimes the steel or tin cans need a coating um, to make sure that the food doesn't react with the metal. Okay, plastic bags and films. We see a ton of this. Think about all the garbage that your family produces in a week just from packaging. Um, plastic is one of the leading packages because it's cheap. Um, this is often used for short-term storage. It also can be used to store frozen foods for longer periods of time. Uh, the advantage of plastic is you can print all kinds of things on plastic. So you can print your 
label right on the plastic and you don't have to have a separate paper. Um, we've got zip closures now, like Ziploc bags on a lot of our products. So you can zip up your tortilla shells or you can zip up your cookies or whatever it is um, after you get done eating them. One thing to be careful of with plastics, not all plastics are able to be microwaved. And if you do microwave them, you're not going to notice something immediate usually, but oftentimes uh, it can lead to development of, you know, cancers and things like that over time if you're not careful about what you're heating up. So you just want to make sure that your plastic is rated to be in the microwave. Um, glass jars and bottles uh, preserve way in a very similar way to cans. You can see the food. That's an advantage. Um, they can be reused and recycled, but they're also pretty easy to break. I think we've probably all dropped a jar of pickles or olives or something like that. Um, and had a mess all over our floor. So it's a heavy product. It makes shipping more expensive, um, but it's non-reactive with the food. So there's some advantages there. Boxes, um, cardboard is used for folded boxes to keep products together. It's not airtight. So a lot of times they'll have another layer inside. Like I'm guessing this product up here, there's probably a plastic sleeve inside. We get Girl Scout cookies that come in a box. There's usually plastic inside and more plastic, right? The carton and the sleeve. So uh, it's good for storage and making things easy to ship, uh, but it's it also requires a lot of times other packaging. Vacuum formed packaging. You can see here that these chocolates have kind of a vacuum formed spot where they're supposed to be, um, keeping things in the right place. Sometimes they'll add film lids, like a plastic lid over it to keep bacteria out. Okay, we'll oftentimes see tamper resistant packaging. So there might be a seal or a plastic wrapper or some extra vacuum seal, something to make sure that the product isn't tampered with. You don't wanna open up, you don't wanna get a jar of salsa and find that somebody has already opened it and it's bad. Um, so that's another advantage of this type of packaging. One thing to think about, will your package be recyclable? Um, a lot of people care deeply about not wasting and throwing away products. And so you have to make sure that your plastic is rated to be recycled and all those kind of things. Okay, so some labeling. Uh, one assignment you guys are going to have this week is to create a glamour panel for your product. A glamour panel is the front of the package. So if we look over here at this box of Ritz crackers, this front part that we see, this is what would be facing us on the shelf when we're at the grocery store. That's the glamour panel uh, or principal display panel. So the United States um, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, has laws about what has to be on this label. First of all, you have to see the name of the product. So in this case, it would be Ritz. There needs to be a general description. So underneath Ritz, we can't see that, but it says something about a cracker. So people know what it is. There needs to be a manufacturer's or distributor's name and address. Most packages have that on the back. That would be the name and address of the company or distributor. So if you had a problem with the product, you could get in touch with them. The weight of the product is usually listed down here in the bottom right corner. We list net weight in the United States and it comes in two different measurements. Um, the metric measurement, and then the common U.S. household equivalent. So it's always going to have grams. That's the metric equivalent. And then it's going to usually have ounces on the front because that's what we typically use in the United States. Other things that you'll find, um, ingredients, that's listed on the back usually. It's listed according to amount from highest to lowest. So the first ingredient makes up the most of the product by weight. The last ingredient makes up the least amount of the product by weight. We'll do a little bit more work with labeling next week too. Um, you're going to see nutrition facts information. This is something we'll get into in future weeks, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, but all of that information is usually included. Um, one newer thing that's been added is best before date indication. People really like to know how long this product will last. Um, newer things, a list of ingredients has to include any allergy causing food. Lots of food allergies in the United States. The most common um, eight are peanuts, crustacean shellfish, like shrimp, <coughs> excuse me, um, tree nuts, wheat, soy, fish, eggs, and milk. The company has to let people know if any of those products are in the food. My sister-in-law has a shellfish, shellfish allergy. If she eats shrimp, 
or some other shellfish without knowing it, um, she has a pretty severe reaction. So that is the food company's job to make sure people know about that. Um, the Food and Drug Administration also says that if they're going to put any health claims on their label, they have to have those approved. They can't say it's 100% organic or fat-free or low-calorie without meeting the guidelines of the FDA. Lastly, um, barcode, the UPC code that we've all seen, the black lines, um, that has to be on the product so that they can trace where that product went to. Okay, so some of the nutrition facts label details, we're gonna get into this in future weeks, so I'm not gonna spend much time. We'll go through that later. Okay, so packaging is very important. Um, keeps the product easy to store, easy to ship. It protects the food and keeps it hygienic. We're not gonna get sick from products due to packaging. Well, we might. Funny story, several years ago when our FFA fruit came in, we had call after call after call about people that had moldy beef sticks. So, um, we brought them all back in here, sent them back to the company, and after they did a little bit of research, they found that one little tiny corner of their plastic bag sealing machine, it wasn't sealing the bag all the way. And so those beef sticks had had, you know, contact with the outside environment and they spoiled. Um, that was a huge problem for that company. They had to replace all of that product and they actually ended up stopping selling those because of that. Um, so packaging is pretty important to, to get a handle on. So remember, let's go back up here. You have an assignment. Create a Google Slides file. Find 10 pictures of different food products with different types of packaging. Put a label on each type. Tell me if it's aseptic or steel to tin can, aluminum. You kind of get the idea. And upload that to Google Classroom. All right, have fun.